वेलकम एवरी वन एज अ प्री वर्कशॉप लर्निंग फॉर द डायलिसिस टेक्नोलॉजी अपडेट वर्कशॉप दैट इज टू बी हेल्ड ऑन सेवेंथ ऑफ अप्रैल 2024 आई डॉक्टर मनोज धानोरकर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ नेफ्रोलॉजी एम्स नागपुर आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन द हिमोडायसिस कैथेटर्स एंड द आर्टिविनस विशुला केयर so the learning objectives of my presentations are to understanding the arteriovenous fistula cannulation and decannulation techniques the hemodialysis catheter care understanding the scrub the hub technique catheter connection and disconnection methods and locking solutions for hemodialysis catheters so before we vouch on to the important part one must understand that there are various sources of blood in a hemodialysis patient for undergoing dialysis the sources includes the fistula graft and the central venous catheter and you, as you can see the fistulas are considered to be one of the lowest risk amongst all these sources of blood for hemodialysis to cause infection so arteriovenous fistulas need to undergo a procedure called cannulation where needles are inserted into it for the blood uh, to undergo dialysis this is called as cannulation and when those needles are removed after the hemodialysis that is called as decannulation now these two techniques have to be performed in a septic way because the germs or pathogens that are there onto the skin of the patient they are prone to get inserted into the blood stream of the patient and this can lead to serious infections or sometimes death so as a precaution one must tell the patients that they should clean their fistulas or a graft sites with soap and water or an antiseptic while they are coming into the clinic now understanding cannulation while doing a procedure of cannulation uh, hand hygiene is must so after the hand hygiene a new clean glove should be worn and uh, the patient a skin need to be clean with an anti antiseptic now many of these products require 30 seconds of a scrub time followed by that another 30 seconds of dry time uh, for the pathogens to get cleaned completely and even after this uh, antiseptic procedure one must understand that one should follow aseptic non touch technique for cannulation so after the antiseptic usage the needling or the cannulation should be done with no touch technique after this procedure one can remove the clean gloves and do hand hygiene similarly is true for our decannulation that one must perform a hand hygiene don a new clean glove a clean bandage or gauze can be used for closing this uh, uh, insertion needle insertion site after the removal so uh, the after the catheter uh, the cannula removal one can put this clean bandage or gauze onto the site of insertion and a clean glove should be used for compressing onto the site also if suppose a dialysis technician needs the help of a patient or a caregiver to assist for compressing onto this area one must follow the similar rules that they must be given a, a new clean glove for compression on the fistula site once they are once the uh, uh, the uh, bandage is applied the fistula arm area can be clamped or or the belt can be applied for pressure holding the pressure now both of these two should also be disinfected appropriately before use once performed one must remove the gloves and again perform a hand hygiene now moving on to the hemodialysis catheter before we vouch on to the details of it we would like to discuss some terms related to the dialysis catheter a dialysis catheter is inserted into the internal jugular vein which goes straight into the heart and the external part that comes out of the skin is the most important part for infection control 
So the, the area at which the catheter comes out of the skin is called the exit site of the, uh, the tunnel catheter. The portion of the catheter which lies outside the exit site, it is called as limb of the catheter. The terminal part, the end of the catheter, where the blood lines or the caps are attached, that is called as hub or port of the catheter. The, the plastic pieces which are screwed onto this hub, which closes the fluid path in between the diastasis session, it is called as cap. And now there are newer needle free, free access devices. Now these devices are very particular in that once they are applied, they close the fluid path when not in use. And the moment the dialysis line or syringes are attached to it, they start flowing on the flowing the blood. So now uh, understanding the infections related to the hemodialysis catheter, there are predominantly three major sources of infections in the dialysis catheter. One is a catheter hub. Now this is the area where the healthcare person's hands touch or even the, uh, the patient's skin flora can get uh, connected or can get contacted during the use. So this is the area where the infection can come from the healthcare worker's hand or a skin flora. Another source of infection is the infusions that are given. Infusions in the form of fluids or medications. These are responsible, this could be responsible for infection of the catheter. The third most important source is the skin organisms, especially at the catheter exit site. Now, this is the area where skin flora is prone to peep into and cause the infection of the diastasis catheter. However, even healthcare worker's hand or a contaminated disinfectant can also cause infection from the exit site. So one must keep the exit site clean and protected and one must always assess it regularly during the usage. The hubs and connector need to be disconnected thoroughly, disinfected thoroughly prior to use. Now catheter exit site care. Now this has to be explained to the patient also that they should not submerge the catheter in the water while they are not using it because that may prone them for infections. Also that the patient should be taught about how to assess the catheters. If the dressing uh, becomes damp, loosened or visibly soiled, the patient should be explained to understand all these aspects. Also some infection related symptoms can also be taught to the patient. A healthcare person should be open about all this communication to the patient. He should educate the patient about all of these uh, symptoms and signs. They should assess the dressing site for signs of infection at every diastasis session and they should ensure that whatever products they are going to apply on this exit site, those are compatible with the catheter material. So, and one should always remember that the exit site should be, uh, care should always be done with an aseptic technique. Now, dialysis exit site care includes the first uh, hand hygiene followed by a new clean glove, use of proper PPE and sometimes some mask if required, and then removal of the old dressing. Then because the old dressing was probably infected, one should remove the, hand, uh, the prior clean glove, do a hand hygiene and wore a new clean glove. Now apply the antiseptic onto the exit site area, allow that uh, antiseptic to work and allow another 15 seconds for it to dry so that the, uh, uh, the area be, uh, gets uh, antiseptic, uh, in, disinfected. Then apply the antimicrobial ointment or a chlorhexidine impregnated dressing and a proper dialysis new dressing. Followed by that, one can remove the gloves and put do a hand hygiene. Now the important stuff related catheter care is the catheter connections and disconnections. Now here is the one that the, the majority sources of infections do occur in many of these patients. The catheter herbs are the potential source of entry of infections. So they must be handled aseptically. Cleaning solutions, antiseptics, antibiotics, medicines and anticoagulants that are to be used while using these catheter herbs 
should be compatible with the catheter and to reduce the infection one must minimize handling these catheter minimize the time that the catheters are kept open and properly train and retrain the staff relating to the all aspects of the catheter care now for connection and disconnection again one must follow the steps like using a, a pp and a mask if required then performing a hand hygiene followed by a new clean gloves then clamp the catheter remove the clamp then scrub the catheter hub with a technique called scrub the hub allow the antiseptic to dry then connect the catheter to the blood lines or a syringe remove the glove and perform a hand hygiene for disinfection again the similar uh, uh, pre uh, precautions like wearing a mask performing a hand hygiene and donning a new clean glove followed by clamping the catheter and disconnecting it from the blood lines or syringes aseptically followed by that one must do a scrub the hub technique and allow the antiseptic to dry attach the new cap aseptically remove the glove and perform hand hygiene so these steps must be followed uh, for for the connection and disconnection of the catheter now coming on to the scrub the hub technique choosing the right antiseptic for doing a scrub the hub is most important using more than 0.5% chlorhexidine with alcohol or a 70% alcohol or 10% povidone iodine is recommended one should scrub the lines and end of the hub thoroughly with friction making sure that there is no residue left onto the catheter hub especially the blood and if one is using chlorhexidine one must remember that removing all the blood residues is very very important for the chlorhexidine to work as an antiseptic use separate antiseptic pads for each hub or each catheter limb and one can even uh, clean the catheter hub and the catheter limb towards the body for few centimeters during the procedure one should allow the limb to dry while holding it on air for almost like 15 seconds now once disinfected the hub should only touch the surface that are considered a sterile such as a syringe which may be used to assess if the catheter is working properly or not or a medication syringe or the end of the blood line so one must remember that scrub the hub technique is something which has to be done every time when there is a connection disconnection a reversal or if the patient is to be put on recirculation for some reason so this technique must be done every time so uh, but what is what is more important for the catheter connection and disinfection uh, disconnection is that the technique has to be done asymptomatically 15 seconds has to be given for hand hub scrub and 15 seconds for it to dry before use once disinfected the catheter hub should not be allowed to touch the non sterile area and cleaning solutions and medication should be compatible with the Now coming on to the last part there is a locking solutions these are selectively used in cases of a long term use of a central venous catheter or a hemodialysis catheter especially when there is a high risk of catheter related blood stream infections so the conditions include the multiple history of central venous catheter insertions in the past or a facility usage where there is a high rate of central uh, catheter related blood stream infections at least like more than 3.5 per 1000 days of usage or if there is a attempted salvage of a catheter uh, if it is infected that is to be used along with the systemic iv antibiotics so this locking solution should be chemically stable it should be compatible with the anticoagulant that going that we are going to add then the active uh, activity of that uh, uh, locking solution should be there for the organism that are tend to form biofilm then there should be low risk of adverse events or toxicity related to this chemical and there should be low potential for inducing any resistance in the bacteria 
Uh, dwell time is usually around 24 hours for these locking solutions. So here there is a uh, there are number of antibiotics that are recommended along with the locking solution concentration that are recommended for each of these uh, antibiotic. But for just for an example, all these preparations of locking solution should be done aseptically. And we have given one example of how to prepare a vancomycin locking solution. So here we are going to add 10 ml of water for injection to a 500 mg of vancomycin injection. We are, taking, we are going to take 1 ml of this antibiotic solution and we are again adding 9 ml of normal saline of 0.9% to it so that the concentration now becomes 5 mg per ml. Now we can instill this required volume of the solution into the particular type and size of the central venous catheter. So one must remember that uh, while using ethanol as a lock solution, there is a risk that these ethanol can cause release of the polymer components of, from the polyurethane catheters and the catheter may get occluded, there may be damage to it or it may get broken. So one must check the compatibility of the catheter while using ethanol locks. Heparin should never be added to these ethanol lock solutions. Now the, a chemical which is frequently used is this uh, toroludine which is actually a derivative of amino acid taurine which exhibits an antimicrobial properties against gram positive coca, enterobacteria C and candida so which is available in a, in a commercial form as torolock. This torolidine, citrate and heparin. Another uh, uh, so solution that is available as a locking solution is a citrolock, cirrocit or duralock which contains trisodium citrate in the form of 46.7% and one must add heparin to these antibiotic lock solutions to help maintain the catheter patency.